Welcome to Celerity Technology. Tonight we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of the X570 Aorus Master by Gigabyte. This is a motherboard that was sent to me by Gigabyte and we'll be taking a look at it. It is compatible with your second and first gen even though it is built for the Ryzen 3000 series. It also has PCIe 4.0 but you can only really benefit from like a device like a, a M.2 um, NVMe SSD that is, that is 4.0 compatible. Um, in a later video I'll be pairing it with this 3700X Ryzen CPU and my Hydro X um, custom loop that I'm going to be building for it. Still waiting on a CPU block for this. And then we'll have something cool to show. But until then, time for an unboxing. So as you can see, it's basically standard Aorus Gigabyte um, branding. You have the little eagle or um, shrimp as some people call it. It's just fairly standard boilerplate for their Oris line, which is kind of their gaming um, centered um, style. So here's the inside of it. So you're greeted with its. This is similar to what I've seen on my Gaming 7 Z370 motherboard, where they have like kind of this pouch or this compartment, the first compartment, and then you op take out the motherboard, which I will place over here and then you're then it comes with like some some stickers and you know to be honest when I first got my none my when I first got my x370 motherboard I felt cool until I saw these stickers I mean this does feel a little bit like making me feel like I'm 12 <laughs> but I mean you know the I guess some of the some people might want to use these for their cables but I mean it's just you know just seeing like no trespassing this is the only thing I don't like about about it so far um, or just like I guess motherboards in general that's just too focused and it's like they're trying too hard but you know little badge then the manual or inst installation guide Shows you how to install the fan and memory, 24 pin, ESP, whatnot. And here's the official user manual, and it comes with drivers. So, this is always a good thing to reference when you have a question on why something's not working. So, and this is kind of the part um, that might be confusing for some. So. I did a build, and two identical builds, one for my dad, one for me. He actually built his 1,200 miles away um, for his Z370, and he did not know about these secret compartments. So he start, he basically built the loop without any IO shield, but you know, he didn't see it. So here we have a little compartment with some toys. So let's see what we got. So first, we have a antenna. And this is going to be a little bit more powerful than the little um, small antennas that you get on some, where they just screw in the back and you know, are less you know in the way. But so it's some screws and hardware for M.2. They really like to package these individually. I've noticed. Wow. Now this is one of my favorite features. You can never ever have enough of these. <laughs> At least I can. So on the other side, we have a lot more, a lot more toys. And this is a more of a higher end motherboard. So let's move this out of the way. So it's a three hundred sixty dollar motherboard, but it does come with a lot of features. Like this is a thermal prob, so you can plug a ten k. Um, temp sensors to it so you can plug it from your custom loop if you have a temp sensor uh, there's a lot of things you can do with these um, but to really kind of figure out what your system's doing comes with a second one we get this right here is a this is actually pretty neat this is a digital RGB a addressable RGB 
to a GST connector. And GST is a style that is used by a lot of your, you know, st stock off the shelf um, uh, strips. So we get like a, let me see, one over here. Yeah, so this is just like a cheap strip that you get off AliExpress or off of Amazon and it allows you to plug them directly into here without reversing polarity or screwing something up. So that's kind of a nice little feature. Some some items do come with that. Then we also have looks like two SATA. I have thousands of those. This is a cable. What type of RGB? Yeah. So this is your standard 12 volt um, analog RGB. So. We also have this little modular device that allows you to plug in all your LEDs and front I.O. switches to this little device right here, which is pretty neat, a reflection. And then what it does is you can plug it directly into the motherboard, which is neat. So we also got this unique thing, which I think it is a, yeah, it looks like a microphone that plugs into it. Um, from what I heard, it is for controlling, um, potentially controlling your fans via sound. And that's with the little, the goodies. So let's put this away so I don't lose any of it. And next we'll get to the motherboard itself. You know, it's, it's nice that they do include a bit more with your, with your high-end motherboards and it's also nice that they attach the IO shield to the to the motherboard as well. So this is actually my first motherboard that I'm wow, this thing is heavy. This thing is really heavy. This is the heaviest motherboard I've ever held. out of the ESD bag. Um, this ESD bag protects it against, um, acts kind of as a Faraday shield, so that you can actually, if, if it's hit by a static electricity or discharge, it will protect the contents in it. You, there's some bags that are pink that don't protect against static discharge. Um, and that's why you see some components come in this, other components don't. So get out the box again. The box it can be used as a, as a place to put a motherboard that's non-conductive. So we'll place it right there. So we got three SATA ports right there. A lot of fan headers. One, two, three, four, five, six. One back there, seven. Is that seven? Oh. That's a lot of fan. We also have two addressable and two analog. So addressable on top and bottom, and analog on top and bottom. I on my on my Z370 motherboard, the addressable um, LEDs actually had a different channel, but um, the analog were on the same channel which was slightly annoying and I and I hope they actually separate these on two different channels to give you a little more control but I tend not to use fusion that much so you have your power switch um, a reset switch um, looks like bio switches which is nice compared to their what they used to use uh, or automatically switches to the different bios where you have different settings and yeah it's nice to see that I like to see a switch and being a little OCD right there. So we have power delivery on this is a 12, 12 plus two VRM. So you have you have 12 um, phases for the V core, and then two for the SOC. And the nice thing about this is um, these are actually true phases. So in the back there actually are no doublers. So you actually have a P pulse width modulation PWM controller that actually supplies that many signals so it takes out that extra extra component and um, it's slightly better than having um, 
than having doublers to really kind of give you those VRMs. You also have two, um, looks like reinforced. And generally, like this provides, just one provides enough, or one will provide enough for this board, um, unless you're doing some exotic, cool, exotic um, cooling, sub ambient, really. My gaming seven only had one heat sink. These come with three of them, which is nice. Um, all, P all the PCI um, slots are reinforced, USB-C, which is always nice because cases are starting to come with it. I, I, to be honest, a pet peeve of mine is to have a case where and a motherboard where they don't really go together. You might have a lot more I/O in the front than you need, or and you really can't use it all because you can't plug in your motherboard or you don't have that spot to plug it in. So it's always nice to see, um, you know, having more I.O. on the motherboard, which makes it nice because I do have a case that has two USB 3.0, um, four, sorry, four USB, which has two separate cables for 3.0. And it's nice to see that this has been added. Um, we see two USB 2.0 headers, sound, um, Wemo caps for the Sabre, um, uh, DAC and audio so it's and overall it's a nice board also a couple of things I've noticed so on my Z370 this um, LED which is used to diagnose if you have a problem um, was at the bottom which makes it very annoying to uh, if you're especially if you're gonna go for vertical GPU because it's gonna be blocked here but generally this this is gonna be free um, what else? So, just looking at it, I mean, it's overall looking nice. I mean, my favorite part about this motherboard is the the the, the VRMs have a true uh, fend heatsink. So, I mean, let me see if I have that around. So, on my old VRM, um, it actually used a it used like just a block of aluminum. And actually, let me go get it really quickly. On my old motherboard, on my Z370, it actually used a different um, heat sink. And it used this basic uh, heat, like it's not really worth calling it a heat sink. I mean, it's a chunk of aluminum shaped like a T. You have the, um, <coughs> you have the vapor, the vapor tube well above the surface. And you have like these LEDs and these these uh, diffusers covering in you know a lot of the surface area. So this to me was an attempt to um, function over form over function. So uh, it's nice to see that they have introduced um, you know real real fins right there. I mean that's nice. That gives you a lot more surface area and a lot more clean potential. The reason why this is actually not on a motherboard right now is because the this was so bad that I had to cool it with water. So it's nice to see that they've improved on this. And actually on the X470 Gaming 7 they actually improved on it um, by adding uh, a finned heat sink and I thought that was awesome. They continued that with the Z370, Z, sorry, Z390 Master which was which were people pretty excited about, and in general, Gigabyte has been doing a pretty good, very good job of offering a very good VRM solution, very good VRM cooling at kind of a fraction of the price. Their whole Z390 lineup was um, really good. I mean, it took the it, it really you know took the price points of all the different areas for motherboards and really delivered a and a very good VRM for each price point, you know. So a lot of people started talking about Gigabyte then. And, you know, there's never, in my opinion, when it comes to a motherboard, the UEFI or BIOS are going to be, you know, fairly similar. You're not going to really spend too much time on it. Some people really like the, the way Asus has their, their UEFI. Some people think that Gigabyte could do a better job. But, I mean, in the end, you can do pretty much every, you can do everything with you know, most modern motherboards um, from brand to brand. So, and you're not generally going to be inside the UEFI that much. So, might as well get a motherboard that has a very good solid VRM, and this thing does. I mean, just see the heat sinks on it. And, I mean, there this is this is kind of overkill 
compared to um, what you really need. But I mean, I do have a solid appreciation for the hardware that they've used on this, the, tw the 12 real phases for the V-Core, and the, f the, the f heat sinks, the real finned heat sinks that they use for this. I mean, this gives you a lot of surface area, and if they had if they had that on my gaming 7 Z370, then it w this wouldn't be in my hand. It would still be on a motherboard. So it's nice to see that. It's nice to see that they're really putting a good VRM solution for the CPUs together, and it's nice that they're, that they're really hitting the price points to really make the boards very competitive. There's some other brands that really have Alloy following, and that's um, my opinion. I think Asus lately hasn't really been able to, you know, really provide something with a good price point um, and the performance. It seems like they're surely going on the market, you know, their whole ROG brand. And, you know, to me, they're, you know, that's really not important. I mean, you, you can't improve the once once you sell once you buy a motherboard you can't improve the VRM you can always improve the UFI make the make it make it better make it laid out better but you know without a good VRM like they like people have been complaining about in the in the Z390 master and you know it's it's nice to see gigabytes providing something and it's nice to see a good something good in the market and hopefully what this will do is show and kind of make other manufacturers start to improve their, their solutions as far as VRM. Give you a better VRM, give you a, a finned heat sink, and I think that's beautiful. I mean, I tend to have a great appreciation for um, some of the, I guess, higher-end motherboards. And wow, so take a look at this. So this is where a lot of the weight is. It's this, this, um, this giant like metal heat spreader on the bottom. Um, so they do have thermal pads under it and on the back we do see via the IO we have um, we have two Ethernet one's 2.5 gigs the other one's just gigabit you have your gold um, and it, this is this is one thing I'm not a huge fan of either like I, if it's gold on the inside that's fine but gold on the outside means um, I spend more time trying to figure out which what goes into what hole. I mean, I always forget, and then you unplug your system to work on it, and you plug everything back in, and you have to, you know, especially if it's against a wall, um, you have to figure out which one. So, you know, color coding, looking around the corner, it's easier. So I, I guess I prefer that over this approach. Um, it comes with a lot of USB, and that's nice. Um, here's your connectors for the Wi-Fi dongle. And um, we have a clear CMOS and a Q flash so you just plug you can actually flash this flash to UEFI without having a um, CPU in it which makes it nice if you need to up if you buy this motherboard and want to install you know Ryzen 4000 series if they're compatible and th that's one thing I've been kind of excited about AMD in general because you have these motherboards that are you know really backwards compatible for multiple multiple generations I mean and all this is a pretty good motherboard it's uh, price. This price point might be out, out of the reach for many. But you know, if you want to try some hardcore overclocking, if you want a really solid VRM, and you know, they're actually really pricing this for to compete against uh, uh, ASUS's products out there. Uh, well, thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Um, please hit subscribe if you want to hear more content like this. This is kind of just more of an overview, but um, uh, I will prob I'm going to be building this in my new HydroX system, so I hope to have some more details out about it. I mean, it's it looks like a solid board. Um, might be a little bit more than what most people have. I mean, it's just kind of crazy with the amount of um, uh, with the amount of phases it has, but and the power requirements of of um, Ryzen 3000, so we'll see how it goes. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening.